Hey guys, what's going on? It's Envy here, and uh, I figured I'd make this other video to um, help uh, get out information about Terra 03 and his uh, failed everything and his future predictions. So I guess we should start here with this LNN timeline. And obviously, you could see everything here is a total failure. Um, <clears throat> We could start with, uh, you know, back to uh, July 2011 right here. And, uh, you know, should obviously be camping outside a cavern. Um, you know, for early birds or whatever. And, uh, you know, bring plenty of food, water, and everything to survive. Get in a, in a, into the, to be out camping outside the cavern. And when Ellen, Ellen, common Ellen would approach, you would need to be ready with their, uh, enough food for um, some amount of time and go into the cavern and he was also asking for twenty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars for a prime location in a cavern um, in the Ozarks and uh, you can see here he says plan on three to four months or more inside cavern location to neutralize the threats and then you can come up here and he has the uh, actual Ellen in pole shift threat maximum or uh, he, he claims that the earth's uh, access would shift um, by up to 90 degrees or so and uh, on September 11th uh, Ellen reaches perigee and it's that close for uh, 0 0.708 AU from earth and uh, you know on uh, September 26, 2011, Ellen and cuts Sun Earth's magnitude portals. Um, sorry about that. To assume polarity control, and, and, and basically he's saying that it's going to tip the Earth. It was going to tip the Earth, <laughs> and that never happened. Obviously, we would not, we would not be even uh, making this YouTube video right now. And uh, you can look here. Um, down here, there's three stars. Northern Hemisphere experiences multiple days of darkness. Three stars right there. And that's pretty much in the uh, so end of September, early October. He predicts that <laughs> the Northern Hemisphere will experience multiple days of darkness. Um, he said three to nine days from what I've heard. And uh, obviously that never happened. And uh, as you can see, anything in this entire timeline has nothing nothing has have uh, transpired and happened at all uh, everything's wrong failed it's just uh, I don't know if, why is the the reason I'm bringing up this uh, factor of these events here is because I don't know why he's continuing to do what he's doing so let's move on it, you know he's on uh, people are just going crazy over online take a look He's on RT News back then. I mean, he's a, <laughs> they actually make fun of him. So, little clip here. Okay, look at the Earth distance, 1.812. Heli is right now getting nearer to us by 300,000 miles per day. In about a week, that number is going to be 400,000 miles per day, and it's going to continue to increase. You're going to see. Now he's talking about Ellie. He, he's calling Ellie a dwarf star. Now, if, if there was any possible way that a dwarf star could be at this close distance, there's no possible way that any of these other uh, planets would even be still in the same orbit. And anybody can do their own homework and figure out that that's not going to happen. Because a dwarf star anywhere inside our solar system would not um, let any of these planets be in the same synchronized orbit as they are, even at this point. Uh, particular point that he's pointing out here. More and more volcanoes going off. That's your sign to wake people up. You have 33 volcanoes erupting right now in the Earth. And that number is going to continue to go up as we move along in the timeline. Is that just Woody Harrelson from that? What was that? <clears throat> and they go on to make fun of him. It's obvious we've all seen that. But it's just a point that this guy's just so funny and ludicrous that they make fun of him on Russian TV news. But anyhow. Let's go on here and let's let's look at you know I'm spending the first half of this video to try and uh, elaborate on where this man's coming from and where he in the second half I'm gonna elaborate on where he's going. I'll try and keep it in 15 minutes. So if you look at where he's going now, I mean it's like radio show, radio show, radio shows, and what he's doing here is he's going 
he's going doing Bible stuff, 9/11 stuff, and you keep looking. It's all radio shows. There's no real research being done here. First of all, 9/11 happened what? <laughs> Over 11 years ago. That should be put in our past. Why do we want to bring that up again? To try and get followers. To try and draw attention. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. All right. So let's move on to. Um, you know his his Bible work, okay? His Bible work has been. I, I'm see. I'm not big on his Bible work, but I get multiple emails and and many particular things saying how flawed he is in this particular area, with the fifth day people, six day people, Anunnaki, and he's also goes on to claim that he's Adam. <laughs> uh, I'll show you that. It's on right on my YouTube channel. Um, let me see. I didn't bring that link up, but I'll, I'll post the links below. And uh, he's doing all these radio shows. It's like, why would if if we're um, worried about this 188 day cycle right here, 188 day cycle? That's the key thing, and the heavy mass object. Why should you be wasting your time with all these radio shows about 9/11? You know, 9-11, 9-11, he's got like multiple, look, it's all radio shows. There is no real research or anything of the sort being produced as far as anything um, going forward with actual research into anything uh, cataclysmic as far as Earth uh, changes. Now, if we have a heavy mass object approaching Earth, do you think you should be wasting your time doing a 9-11 show? Now, come on, people, wake up. Seriously. A heavy mass object. Let's go over here. There's Ellen, and that's the one he failed on, right? So, okay. He says the heavy mass object is is back here behind Ellen. And it's coming in. It's, 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 it's like uh, around 5 AU, 4 AU. That puts it over here somewhere. All right, Ellen in, which he already failed on right there. Gone. See ya. There's Earth. And there's this heavy mass object that he's predicting right here. This is today's date, February 22nd, 2012. Heavy mass object right there. He's, he's, this is a big thing right here. But he's going. what he's going to do is he's going to make these video shows about, radio shows about well, World, Trade, World Trade Center 7. Um, oh, oh, how do uh, how a chat rooms run ran? Uh, um, 9/11 show. Look, 9/11 show. But we're supposed to be concerned about the 188 day cycle and the doomsday um, events coming. I don't get it. Why would you be so concerned about all these things? Bible. Look, Bible. Um, just look at some of these radio shows. That's been debunked totally, and he still keeps it up. Totally insane that he keeps it up. Look, 9-11, earthquake warning, using pretty much a child's program right there. Just look at his, I mean, if you guys go down his video selection, it's just uh, totally insane. Look, nine, it's just mostly 9-11s, and, uh, well, I'm getting past the halfway mark. So here, let's jump over here. And, uh, so here's my future predictions for Tarot. Here's what he's looking at, right? He's got March 22nd. He predicts a 10 point uh, plus earthquake, and it won't happen. And what he's going to use, he's going to use a, it's not going to happen on March 22nd, and it's going to give it take a couple days. And what he's going to do is he, he's going to use a 6 plus earthquake, and he's going to call it a sign of the 188 day cycle. And he's going to continue to use that as the uh, heavy mass object hypothesis. That's what he's going to use to uh, forward anything to go about with that. And what he's going to do from there on out is he's, he, he's continuing to bring on his 9-11 work and his Bible work to attract more people and continue to brainwash the, the masses with his heavy mass object theory to gain more followers. So what he's doing is he's he knows the heavy mass object is a total um, uh, nonsense in a sense, and he's using his 9/11 uh, 
work that he su kind of succeeded in the past with getting um, people to listen to on these forums. And he is uh, going to use his Bible work, which he succeeds in because he knows a lot about it. He thinks he knows a lot about it, but it's only in his mind. So he's going to use that. And he's also right here. He's um, asking for $25, $25 for a weekly newsletter, $25 for the year for a weekly newsletter. And you could see I made a little timeline like he does. And uh, it, it pretty much elaborates on everything that he is planning on doing throughout the entire year. And what's going to transpire after that, he is pushing for, he's already speaking about it on, you know, on some radio shows about, how uh, September 27th, um, he, he's saying the um, heavy mass object will cross between Earth and Sun just behind Ellen. And, you know, he's basically saying it's, it's about one year behind uh, Comet Ellen, which it was in the same field of view as he likes to likes, uh, word it. And I'll also provide the uh, link to the PDF, uh, Crew 4T. Uh, PDF that he is also using to elaborate on the uh, heavy mass object following the uh, field of view of this heavy mass object. Uh, I'm sorry, of uh, Comet Ellen, where the heavy mass object is. So he's basically trying to confuse people and make them think that uh, what where the same uh, that Ellen was pushed out in front of this heavy mass object. And that the heavy mass object was behind Elenid and the same field of view and same perspective of uh, of Comet Elenid as viewed from Earth um, last year. So it's basically buying him time to collect donations and or uh, get more followers. And what he's doing is he's using the 9-11 Bible work to uh, get more people to follow him in a sense here. And after, after September, Terrell will say that his astronomers made a critical mistake and that the ancients were right all along. And they were. And the actual date is uh, December 21st, 2012. And he's going to go along with the ancients. This is, my, this is all my predictions. And this is some of what he's already done and predicted. And it goes along this timeline here and has some of my predictions on what he's going to do to try and push the goalpost out like some people say to try and extend the entire timeline to um, you know collect donations um, what what have you it could be multiple things and of course we all hope that in December 31st 2012 we can only hope that Terrell stops fearmongering we can all move forward past the Doomsday Ellen and HMO 2012 prophecies. That's all we can hope for after December 2012. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you go to, I mean, you got, oh, go over to here to, uh, I mean, you listen to here on the radio show is 180 Day Cycles Totally Debunked. And there's also this, if you go to his actual Terrell's website, look. Subscribe, subscribe to a newsletter. I mean, why would I subscribe to a newsletter if we're worried about uh, all these significant events approaching? And you don't even, uh, uh, the, the newsletter you don't even uh, make yourself. He doesn't even produce that himself. And uh, come over here. This is uh, another website that's been produced, Terrell Croft, debunked. Uh, it, it shows and expresses how he's uh, 188 cycles totally flawed. There's no 188 day cycle, and you can go up here. Um, it shows right here in anticipation of the objections and to converting the magnitude of joules. We note the magnitude scale on the rhythmic, uh, which means that actually the, uh, the damp is spiking the graph totally. And this is the total. Basically, this is saying that it's total energy right here that's been um, produced. In the past, since uh, 1 1 2009 to 1 1 2012, and there's no 188th day cycle conclusion right here. And anybody can look at any of this uh, data research and of the assort. And I'll provide all the links. And I'm sorry I'm running out of time here. I guess I probably should do a part one into part two. But um, thanks for watching. I'll post all the links below. Take care. Keep your head.